I'm, I'm gonna keep, I'm just gonna wait till you finish clapping. I'm enjoying the shit out of You definitely like black girls, sir. <laughs> uh, my name is Tanya Moore. I am a 38 British born Jamaican lady. And some people say, Tanya, what does that mean? And I'm like, guys, basically, all it means is that I love indoor skiing, right? That's what it means. <laughs> British born Jamaican race. What it means is that I can swim, right? But like a little bit. That's what it means, right? <laughs> um, I shaved my hair off three years ago. Now, nah, when you shave your hair, things change. People approach you differently. I came out the tube station in Brixton and this guy approached me and he was like, yo, Empress. <laughs> Empress Queen. <laughs> Empress, my size. <laughs> Give me a number now. <laughs> Guys, he was white. <laughs> Things are different, yeah? And I travel a lot doing this job. I went to Wales recently. Anyone here Welsh? Yeah. Oh, shit. <laughs> Oh my God, we love Wales. <laughs> now I went to a, I had a lovely job, a 10 week job, doing a TV job there. And I went to this lovely place. Normally when you say Wales, people instantly think of Cardiff. I wasn't lucky enough to be in Cardiff. I was in a quaint little seaside town called Porthcawl. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You've been there before? Porthcawl, let's just say it, it's a shithole. <laughs> It is. It's where rats go and do drug deals. That's what Paul <laughs> does, right? And I'm there for 10 weeks. I'm from South London. I shouldn't be in a pool of call. It made no sense. It was like taking a sheep and putting it in, not in a carnival. No sense, right? <laughs> but I'm there for 10 weeks. I thought, I'm going to have a look around, check out my surroundings. I found this wonderful restaurant called Harbour Bar. Nah, Harbour Bar, I'm going to say, is middle class. Why do I say that? It's got windows for walls. That's all it takes, right? <laughs> I thought, when I go back, into this restaurant, I'm gonna to pretend to be middle class, right? So I bought a Guardian newspaper and I sat down. Right? <laughs> the waitress comes, I don't know what else you lot do. The waitress <laughs> comes over and she says, would you like a starter? Now I'll be honest with you guys, I don't normally get a starter when I go out to eat. You go Nando's, you get the chicken, you fuck off, <laughs> right? But I said, I'm being middle class. So I said, what would you recommend? She said, I recommend the potato and leek soup. I've never had potato and leek soup in my life. I'm Jamaican. In a Jamaican soup, there's potato and leek, but there's more fucking ingredients, <laughs> isn't it? In a Jamaican soup, there's more food than water. I tell you what's in a Jamaican soup, right? You've got a scotch bonnet, you've got four cloves of garlic, pimento, the rest of the fucking garlic, right? <laughs> you've got the sound of the sea, okay? You've got some cho-cho, maybe one or two still pans, an onion and a magnum. That is what is in a Jamaican <laughs> soup, yeah? So I said, Tanya, be in middle class, get the potato and leek soup. So she bought the potato and leek soup. I ate the potato and leek soup. Guys, it's one of the best soups I've had in my whole life. <laughs> but now I'm upset because I'm by myself and I'm just trying to get eye contact with someone so I can say, babes, have you tried the fucking soup? This is so nice, right? But no one's looking at me. I saw a lady outside walking her dog. I looked at the dog, the dog didn't even give me eye contact. I'm back in the restaurant. There's a table of 10 people right here, right? One of them starts choking. <laughs> Someone else from the table jumps up, runs around and starts giving him the Heimlich. As he received the Heimlich, guys, he gave me eye contact. <laughs> that was my one opportunity to say, babes, have you tried the fucking soup? <laughs> Listen, when he died, we all had soup. It was so nice. <laughs> oh, God, so nice. And traveling is good, but I travel often. It doesn't allow you to uh, eat well because you're out and you're in hotels and you're just getting junk food, right? So I put on a bit of weight over the last few years, put on two dress sizes. So I bought myself a Peloton bike, try and figure out the fitness. Are you laughing at me putting on weight? What a bitch! <laughs> <laughs> I bought a Peloton bike. <laughs> no, she was really laughing hard! <laughs> I bought a Peloton bike. Now, for those of you who don't know what a Peloton bike is, it's a spin bike, right? And it comes with like a massive flat screen TV on the front. And I said this recently when I did the Grigg and Crawley. A lady at the back, she was like, you're just saying that so you can tell us you got money. <laughs> I was like, obviously, stop being dumb. Um, <laughs> so I got the Peloton bike, right? And it's great. You can do so many different things on it. You can do stretch, Pilates, yoga, biking, all the things. It's got like over a thousand instructors on the thing, on the app. So there's like over a thousand people that I ignore every day. Right? <laughs> and it's great because I put it next to my bedroom window. Because when you sit on it and you look outside, you can see McDonald's. 
Oh, God. Basically, what I'm saying is I've got a really expensive clothes horse. That's what I'm letting you know. And I hang the clothes that I can't fucking wear no more on it. Yeah, that's where we are. What I wanted to do was figure out how I'm going to quickly get rid of the fat from the most stubborn place on the body. And Instagram will tell you the most stubborn place on your body is your stomach. And that's a lie. Because, ladies, there's an extra part of us that is stubborn in. And that place is called the fupa. <laughs> he knows. <laughs> For those of you who don't know, fupa is an acronym. F-U-P-A. It stands for Fat Upper Pussy Area. <laughs> and it's the area that sits below the stomach and above the pussy, right in the middle. Kind of like a mezzanine. <laughs> right. Yeah? Well, I'll clear that shit up too, ladies. Yeah? And at first when I heard it, I was like, oh, I was really upset. I got a fupa. And then I was like, actually, only rich people can afford mezzanine. So hello, right? <laughs> on the... And back in the day, if you really go into history, when you put on weight, they saw that as a sign of wealth and prosperity. So really, it's not my fupa, it's my ISA. <laughs> <laughs> and then I think to myself, what is the fupa of a man? What is the fat upper penis area of a man? It's just the whole man, isn't it? <laughs> guys, listen, I'll be telling you more. You guys have been fantastic. Thank you.